Hi, I'm Lena Nelson, and I'm going to take you through a nice back opening yoga flow. So at certain times in your cycle, you might feel a little bit of extra pressure around the lower back or some aches in there. So all the poses here are designed to help release some of the tension in that area. So when you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get started in a comfortable seated position. So I'm here in easy cross-legged pose. Um, if you want to, you can also just separate the legs slightly if that's a bit more comfortable for you. And we're just going to start to open out the sides of our back. So we're going to bring the left hand towards the inner side of your mat, so towards the outside of your left thigh. And as you next inhale, we're going to take the right hand up towards the sky and bending that left elbow as we exhale, we're just going to sink down to the left side, feeling the whole left side of the body start to open up. Good. Holding here, maybe gaze up at the ceiling for an inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to come back down to center and switch sides. So as that hand is coming down, we bring the right hand now to the outside of the right glute. And as we next inhale, we swing up the left hand to the ceiling, bending into the right elbow. As we exhale, nice side stretch, sinking to the right this time, feeling the left side of the body start to open up. Good. So we're creating space through the torso. This is going to help later when we start to open up the back. Good. And as we exhale, we come back down to center. We're going to find some easy twists next. So what I want you to do is bring the right hand to the left knee. And as you next exhale, we're going to twist round towards the left. See if you can gaze past the left shoulder. Good. And as we inhale, we're going to come back to center and switch sides. So left hand to the right knee. Good. And exhaling, twisting now towards the right. Good. So twists are great for the spine. It's a nice way to ease ourselves in. When you next inhale, we're going to come back to center and then we're slowly going to roll over to our tabletop position towards the center of our mat. So we're going to go through some cat cows, which is a classic back opener, one of my favorite things to do in a yoga practice. So when you're here in tabletop, allow the feet to relax. Knees are hip distance apart, or if you want to, you can take them slightly outside hip distance. That's going to create some more space. And hands are underneath the shoulders. And as we next inhale, we're going to drop the belly button down, drop the spine, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and start to gaze forward. Good. So this is lengthening the spine here in cow pose. And as we exhale, we're going to push the floor away, rounding the back, sending the tailbone down towards the mat, sending the shoulders up to the sky. Good, so we go two more like this. So inhale, we find cow pose, arching the back, lengthening the spine. Maybe start to gaze upwards. And as we exhale, we round the spine, push the floor away. Let the head drop heavy. Good, we go one more time. So inhale, arching the back, squeeze the shoulder blades together, opening out the chest. And as we exhale, we round the spine, push the tailbone down all the way. So really finding length here. Good. As we inhale, we're going to come back to center. So start to gaze forward. So chin is going to lift. And then as we exhale, we're going to drop the chest and the chin down, finding this eight limbed prayer pose. So we're kind of arching the back here. We're going to stay here gazing forwards for an inhale. Good. And as we exhale, we're going to shift the chest forwards as the hips drop to find cobra pose, our first back bend of the practice. So you can have the elbows nice and bent, connecting the belly button down, or you can come up high if you want to, if your back feels nice and open. Good. And as we next exhale, we're just going to bring the chest back down to the mat and scoop up into tabletop and then child's pose. Good. So with child's pose here, once you're nice and settled again if you want to you can take the knees out wide or you can bring them together completely up to you but we're going to start to stretch into the shoulders so as we next inhale i want you to come up onto the fingertips so keep the forehead down onto the mat good and as we exhale we're going to walk the hands over towards the left side of the mat or towards the outer edge of your mat good so once you're here bring the palms back down to the mat and we're going to start to breathe into the right shoulder so as you inhale think about pushing the right side of your body outwards and really feeling the stretch down the side of the shoulders and exhale good we're going to go one more so deep inhale and exhale nice as we next inhale we need to walk the hands back to center 
and then towards the right side, so on our fingertips. And then as you next exhale, just plant the palms down. Nice. As we inhale, we push out the left side now, the left shoulder. Really feeling that bit expand. Nice stretch through the shoulders and exhale. Good, so one more breath. Pushing out the left side of that shoulder and exhale. Nice, steady and gently as we inhale, we're going to walk the hands back to centre and then find a nice child's pose here. So you're going to rest here in child's pose for a nice inhale. Think about opening out the back of the ribs, hopefully there's more space in the shoulders. And exhale. Good. As we next inhale, you're going to rock forwards back onto your tabletop position. And then as you exhale, I want you to come down onto your forearms. Plant the palms down onto the mat. So we're here in this tabletop with our forearms down. I want you to flex the feet, take an inhale here. And as we exhale, I want you to lift the tailbone up, finding dolphin pose. So this is gonna to help to strengthen the shoulders, but also create heat through them. You might also feel this down the back of the legs. This is pretty similar to downward facing dog. So again, it's gonna be a nice stretch for the back of the legs. We're going to stay here in dolphin for two more breaths. This is going to be the hardest pose that we find today. And then after that, we can start to stretch. Take an exhale. One more inhale. And as we exhale, you can bring the knees back down and come back into your child's pose. So maybe notice the sensations going through the shoulders. That was quite a strengthening pose. So asking a lot for the shoulders. Here, so settling down is also a great inversion, the dolphin pose. So always important to come back into child's pose to rebalance that blood pressure. Nice. So early as you next inhale, I want you to rock up to tabletop position. Again, bring the forearms down as you exhale. But this time, we're going to extend the legs out and come down into your sphinx pose. So this is exactly what it says on the tin. We're coming in to look a little bit like the sphinx. So forearms are in front of you, elbows in line with the shoulders, palms are flat onto the floor. And this is a nice gentle back bend. This pose is traditionally used in yin yoga. So we can stay here for quite a long time, but again, I'm not gonna make you do that. So one thing I love about sphinx pose is that it spreads the collarbones out and really opens out the chest. So we're gonna stay here for a deep inhale and exhale so this is a lovely back bend so we're allowing the back to round which is actually going to find some length in the spine one more inhale and exhale nice slowly and gently i want you to walk your right hand forwards just slightly this is just to create some space then as you exhale i want you to thread the needle so take your left hand and thread it through this gap between your arm and your chest Good. Once it's here, we're going to relax that left shoulder down and then we're going to walk the right hand towards the left, coming into this crisscross position. And you're going to feel this down the left, deltoid around the left shoulder, holding for an inhale and exhale. Good. As we next inhale, come back to center. So that's Sphinx pose and we're going to find that through the other side. So walk the left hand forward slightly to create some space. And as we next exhale, thread that needle through. So right hand through this gap between your left arm and chest. Drop that right shoulder. You might already feel the stretch here. And then we take the left hand across and really deepen that stretch down the outside of the right shoulder. Holding for an inhale. And exhale. Good. As we next inhale, slowly make your way back into your Sphinx pose. Good. And hopefully the shoulders feel a little bit more open now. So really opening out the chest. And now we're going to open out the front of the shoulder. So take that right hand underneath the shoulder and then send the left hand out to the side. Good. It's a nice kind of almost perpendicular to your body. So a nice kind of crisscross shape here. As you next exhale, you're going to use your right hand to push yourself to twist and open out that left shoulder. So if you can, tap that right foot behind you. And if it's too intense of a stretch, you can rest your forehead down into the mat in front of you. Or if you want to intensify the stretch, you can gaze up at the ceiling. We're going to hold here for an inhale. And exhale, come back down to center. We're going to find that through the other side. So 
Extend that right hand to the side. Left hand is underneath your shoulder. We take an inhale here. And as we exhale, we push the floor away with that left hand twisting. See if you can tap your left foot behind you. And again, if it's too intense of a stretch for that shoulder, you can put your forehead down. Otherwise, you can look up at the ceiling and really open up that shoulder. Good, and as you next exhale, we come back down to center. Try not to keep you in that pose for too long. It's very intense for the shoulders. Come back into Sphinx pose here. And again, you should feel even more open. So really spread the collarbones wide, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good, and as we exhale, just slowly make your way back into tabletop. Good, and inhale. As we next exhale, we're gonna find cat pose, rounding the spine. This is just gonna counter that sphinx pose that we found. Good. So we want to counter any back bend that we find. So resetting the spine, slowly make your way back into your tabletop position. Sorry, tabletop position. So slowly and gently from tabletop, I want you to bring that right knee forwards to the right wrist and then swing the right foot out slightly. We're gonna come into a pigeon pose. So even though the pigeon pose is a nice hip opener, it's connected to lower back tension. So always good to open out that right glute muscle. Once you're here, you can either come down into the forearms or stay on your palms. And we're gonna stay here in pigeon for three full breaths. Good. So with pigeon pose, I want you to imagine as if though there's like a ball, like a really small ball or a cup and saucer that's now balancing on your sacrum, so just the lowest part of your back. And we're trying to not let that ball shift in any direction. We want to keep a nice neutral squared hip and that's really gonna help you find your pigeon pose and really stretch out the external rotators that run down the outside of your glute muscles here. Good. One more breath. And exhale. Lovely. As you next inhale, slowly come up onto the palms and then make your way in your own time to your tabletop position. So really take your time to get there. It's quite an intense stretch to get out of. Good. And then maybe just give a quick shake of the leg once you are out of your pigeon pose and we're gonna find it through the other side. So as you next inhale, left knee meets the left wrist. Good, allow that left foot to just crawl up the mat slightly. Shift back with the right leg and prepare for your pigeon pose here on this side. So again, you can stay on your palms, you can already feel a stretch there, but if you want to deepen the stretch, maybe come down onto the forearms, coming into the pigeon pose. Good, so two more full breaths here. And again, imagine that little golf ball or cricket ball that's resting on your lower back, trying to keep it stable, keeping it from rolling off of your back. That's the alignment you want to find here in pigeon pose. And again, relieve that lower back tension. So for me, I can already feel this pose kind of releasing my any lower back tightness that I'm holding. So if you're not feeling it now, do not worry. Eventually, you're gonna feel a little bit lighter in the lower back. Good. So slowly, as you next inhale, we're slowly gonna rock up to our palms. And again, we're gonna slowly come out of this one, but we're gonna shift the weight onto the left glute first, and then slowly bring that right leg in front of you. And this time, just shake out the legs, again, releasing that intense pigeon pose stretch. Nice. So slowly and gently, I just want you to come to lie down onto the mat. And once you're here, I want you to think about pressing the lower back down into the mat. So tilt the pelvis, pelvis to allow this to happen. And these are going to be slightly bent. And we're just going to allow the mat to work as a kind of pressure point for our lower backs to press into. And it's quite a nice way to massage the lower back muscles. So really pressing that belly button in, tilting the pelvis, allow that lower back to find that connection to the mat. We're gonna stay here for one inhale and exhale. Press the lower back into the mat. 
Good. So then you gently just bring the knees to the chest and you can start to roll from side to side because we're in this rounded position. The lower back is exposed so you can start to massage the lower back, maybe rocking around in small circles. Nice. And then slowly and gently, I just want you to bring the soles of the feet to face the ceiling. We're going to prepare for our happy baby pose. So grab the outside of your feet. And as you next exhale, we're going to pull the knees down towards the armpits. You can allow the knees to spread out wide as well if you want to find some space. And this is going to help to round the lower back. Good. So finding some space here. Good. And again, because the lower back is exposed, you can start to rock side to side, maybe small circles, just to massage those muscles a little bit further. Good. So slowly and gently, just release the feet here from Happy Baby and bring the knees together. Good. And then slowly, I just want you to drop both knees down to the left side. So we're finding the supine twist. If the shoulder's lifted off the mat, don't worry. We're gonna to try to find that motion of rooting them down. So even if they don't touch, just having that motion in sight or in your mind is gonna help you deepen your supine twist. Now, if you're nice and open, perhaps you want to cactus the arms out or take them out to the sides. Or if you want to, you can give yourselves a nice hug if it's not available to you to extend the arms. Good. Working into the lower back. Take one more inhale here. And exhale, release. If you want to, you can start to blink the eyes closed. Just to start to relax into these supine twists. Good, and as you next inhale, we're gonna bring both knees back to center. And then exhale, take them to the right side. Good. So again, if the shoulder's lifted off the mat, don't worry too much. Just think about sending them down. And if not, you can always hug the elbows or bring both hands to your hip. Or if you're nice and open, you can cactus the arms out. Whatever supine twist works for you today, you can take that. And again, blink the eyes closed. Take one more inhale. And exhale, release. Nice, slowly and gently as we inhale, we're gonna bring both knees back to center. Good, and make sure you have enough space behind you on the mat. We're gonna to start to rock forwards and backwards. We're gonna prepare for a plow pose. Now, if you're not used to plow pose or you don't want to find it today, feel free to stay in knee to chest pose. Otherwise, we're gonna rock forwards and backwards and we're gonna send our feet behind the back, sorry, behind our heads coming into this plow pose. Now this is quite intense for the hamstrings as well. So if you want to, you can introduce a micro bend in the knee, but this is gonna to help to round the lower back even further than that happy baby pose. So again, if you feel uncomfortable here, you can come back to that knee to chest pose. Otherwise stay here for an inhale. And exhale. Good, one more breath. And exhale. Good, slowly and gently come back to that knee to chest pose if you're not already there. Good, and bring yourselves to your smallest position. So squeezing the knees in, see if you can tap your knees to your forehead and then release the head back down. Nice, slowly start to rock forwards and backwards. We're gonna come up to a seated position. Good, and once you're here, we're gonna bring the soles of the feet to touch and come into our butterfly pose. So once you're here, so again, the heels can be close to the sacrum, they can be far out, as wide as you wanna take them, wherever it feels comfortable for you. If you're close enough to your feet, you can interlace your fingers over the toes. If your feet are far away, you can just bring your hands down to the mat. And as you next inhale, chest is gonna lift, nice tall spine. And as we exhale, we're gonna round the spine as we forward fold. You're gonna feel this in the lower back. Good and stay here. So with every exhale, see if you can sink down a little bit more. Nice. One more breath. Good. So you can stay here for as long as you like, because it's really great for the lower back. And this is a yin yoga pose, so you can even stay here for five extra minutes if you want to. It's completely safe to do so. But otherwise, if you're ready, you can come up to seated. Make sure to pry the legs together with your hands just to release 
with that little bit of a hip opener. Cross the legs and start to close your practice. So you can bow down. And thank you so much for flowing with me today in this back opening yoga flow. My back feels like it's been pulled in every direction, so I hope your back feels a little bit better. Um, and I'll see you again on the mat sometime soon.